In this video, I want to talk about how we can come up with method of moments estimators using the first, second, and third central moments of a normal distribution. So here, as I've said, I've said that the population here is a normal distribution, which has got two parameters, mu and sigma squared. Um, in the population, what we can do is we can think about there being a number of population moment conditions. The first of which we're just going to say that the expected value of x minus mu is equal to zero. So that's the first centered moment condition. The second centered moment condition is that the expectation of x minus mu all squared is actually equal to sigma squared. Okay, so these are our population moment conditions. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and come up with analogues in our sample, and they're going to be our method of moment estimator for the parameters mu and sigma squared here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to consider our sample, and for each of these moment conditions, we're going to come up with the sample analog. So starting off with this first population moment condition, the sample equivalent here, remember that whenever we see the expectation sign, all we need to do is just replace it by the sample equivalent, which is just the sample mean. So then this first sort of expectation just becomes 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu hat. And mu hat here just means our method of moments estimator. And we set that this is equal to 0. So that's the first method of moments estimator. It's defined by the solutions to this equation. Whatever mu hat solves this equation is our method of moments estimator for mu. Then if we do that with the second moment condition, then all we do again is we replace the expectation by the sort of 1 over n times the sum. So then we just get 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu hat all squared is equal to sigma hat squared. So if I was to solve these two equations simultaneously, then that would define a particular method of moments estimator for the parameters mu and sigma squared. And we can see quickly enough that if we were to just sort of expand one, would just take the sum and sum over mu hat, we would actually get that here mu hat method of moments is just equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi. In other words, mu hat method of moments is just the sample mean which means that sigma hat squared method of moments here, substituting this sort of expression for mu hat into it, is just 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu hat all squared, which is just the same as 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar all squared. And from this we notice a couple of things. We notice that actually these two sort of sample equivalent, or our estimators in this case, these actually turn out to be exactly the same as those which would be obtained via a maximum likelihood estimation strategy. And it turns out that under a set of conditions, maximum likelihood and method of moments are actually consistent estimators of the population parameters. But we do notice something about these estimators. In particular, the second estimator here, sigma hat squared method of moments, because it's divided through by n here rather than n minus 1, we actually see that the method of moments estimator here is actually, in this case, biased. So there's no particular condition which ensures that method of moments estimators are, in fact, unbiased. This first estimator is unbiased, whereas the second estimator actually isn't. So the best we can do is actually hoping that they're consistent. But then you could ask, well, why did I pick these first two moments of our population moment condition? Why didn't I, let's say, pick the second and the third centered moment condition, which in this case is just that the expectation of x minus mu all cubed is equal to zero. So this is just basically saying that the distribution is symmetric. So what I could have done is I could have used this third moment condition to come up with a third sample analog of this particular moment condition, which would then in this case be 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu hat all cubed, and setting that equal to zero. So what I could have done is, because I've got two parameters, I could have used, let's say, the second and the third moment condition to come up with estimators of sigma squared and mu. So what I would do is I would sort of computationally 
look for values of mu which made that this particular relationship is true in the third moment condition here. And then I would substitute the answer for that into the second one, which would help me to find sigma hat squared. So the idea is that what we would do computationally is we would sort of formulate some sort of cost function which was equal to this sort of side before the equal sign, and we'd look for values of mu which made that cost equal to zero. We're not going to consider here the circumstance where we use all three of these moment conditions because that's actually the circumstance where the number of moment conditions is greater than the number of parameters k here, and that is what defines GMM. In this particular circumstance, we're thinking about the case where m is actually equal to k, and that is what defines method of moments estimators. And what I've done here is I've actually coded this up into MATLAB. So what I've done here is I've formulated a cost function, which is just the left side of this third sample moment condition here. And we're looking for the sort of value of mu hat here, which makes this cost function equal to zero. So we're doing that computationally, but I've also got a graphical sort of illustration of this. So here we see we've got a sort of diagram of the values of mu which the computer is trying against the sort of cost which is associated with that particular value of mu. And we see that where this sort of blue line and this red line intersect is where our sort of estimate of the parameter should be. And the computer's actually come up with an estimate of the parameter which is sort of pretty close to 10. It's 9.96 basically. If I run it again, we should hope to get something that's not too far away from that we see that we get something like 9.98. So these values are clustering around 10, which is what we'd hope. We'd hope that method of moments isn't too far off the mark in this particular case. What I've also done is I wanted to repeat this exercise a number of times and then draw a histogram of all the different values of sort of mu hat, which our method of moments estimator has actually generated. So we've got the same parameters here and I'm doing a thousand iterations. We see in this case that the values are very clustered around 10. So here the x-axis here is just the sort of values of mu hat which we've obtained and the y-axis here is the sort of frequency of those values. And I've actually superimposed on top of this a normal curve. So this is fitting a normal curve to our histogram of data. And we see that the values are very close, clustered around 10 and we also notice that the sort of sampling distribution here from our estimator isn't far off that of a normal distribution. And that's what we should expect, because as it turns out, in the asymptotic limit, the method of moments estimators actually behave very normally. So because we've got a sample size here of 1,000, our distribution is starting to look fairly normal. 